Imagine you're alone in a room. Suddenly you hear a shrill alarm, and within two minutes' time, 200 teenagers pour into the room. They go to shelves that are around the room, and they open boxes, and they pull out objects of all shapes and sizes, and then they sit in front of you, and they start making sound right at you. This is my life every day. I'm a high school band director, and I love every minute of it. I teach in a program that has earned gold medals at the national level for 40 consecutive years. So when people want to talk to me about my job, they often ask, how do you motivate people towards excellence? It all starts with the bricks in my room. The bricks in my classroom are very, very, very plain. They have zero character. They're these plain white rectangular bricks. If they had a character, it would have to be described as institutional at best. However, 13 years ago, an interesting phenomenon occurred. About 10 students decided they wanted to claim some bricks. So they each chose one and wrote their name and their graduating class on the bricks. They did so in a back practice room with the thought that maybe they wouldn't get caught or no one would notice. Well, people did notice. The next year saw a few more bricks and the year after even more. Until finally, three years after the original bricks were claimed, some grade 10 students came up to me and said, Hey, Miss Ferguson, what's the deal with the bricks? How do we earn a brick of our own? And it hit me. The bricks were the talk of the class. These students were spending time trying to figure out how to get a brick of their own. So I made up some guidelines. I said, well, if you stay in band until the end of grade 12, <laughs> I'll give you your own brick, and you can decorate it however you like. The next few years saw some amazing results. Students were interested. They wanted to choose their real estate. They wanted to have their brick be by a brick of a friend, or perhaps where they sat or where they store their instrument. And pretty soon, a group dynamic started to emerge. Entire classes wanted to have their bricks together. One class painted their background green, another yellow, and finally another one put a border around their bricks and chose a brick in the middle to display all the accomplishments they'd made for that year. The students had spoken. They wanted to be remembered as individuals, but also as part of a group, and they had proven that excellence was important to them. Whether I'm in my band room or directing an honor band or at a music camp, my job is to bring people together towards excellence. People with other focuses in their lives, people with other backgrounds, they have to leave all that baggage at the door, and they have to come together towards one final excellent musical product. Now, I've started to wonder, is excellence being lost in a vortex of smartphones and social media? How do we satisfy the craving people have for love and attention that they're often trying to find through web-based relationships? We all know about Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Aside from the safety and biological needs, he outlines the need for self-actualization, love and belongingness, and esteem. It's my belief that we cannot really, really enjoy success unless these needs are met. So when people are on social media and involved in, hey, look at me types of posts on the internet, maybe they're trying to fill a void in love and belongingness or in self-actualization. But maybe is there another way to fill that void? What about good old human connection? I'd like to propose a revolution. One in which we revolve back to a time, a time when people connected as human beings face to face and spent time trying to learn the thoughts and beliefs of each other. If we nurture the individual, they will be more likely to be able to buy into a concept of excellence and they'll be a better team player. Now, how do we nurture the individual? We have to start by making them feel valued and worthwhile. Now, as a high school teacher, I can tell you that teenagers have a spidey sense, and they can smell a fake a mile away. You must start with genuine care. Use a person's name. A person's name, as we all know, is the sweetest sound they can hear. I'm sure you've heard of those studies where people open the phone book when it used to come to our doors, and they'd look up their name first. Using a person's name tells them that they're worth your time and worth knowing. 
Next, when you compliment someone, please use specific compliments. As a band director, I've done hundreds of concerts, and at the end of the concert, often the comments come, hey, good job. You'd be surprised at the different reaction from students if you say something like, the way you played that note at the end of the second movement made my heart flutter, and it took me back to the moment I saw my son Nate for the first time. Their eyes get wide and they say, oh, thank you. <laughs> Excellent. So specific compliments really do make a difference. We also need to ask people questions. Asking questions identifies you have a genuine curiosity and you really care about that person. But you have to stick around to hear the answer. I remember one time I was running through the halls at school to some probably unimportant meeting and I passed a 15-year-old girl in the hall, and I said, hey, how you doing? And she said, I'm fine, I guess. And something in the hitch of the tone of her voice made me stop and say, why don't you come in my office for a minute? So she sat in my office, and she said, I'm really sorry, Miss Ferguson, I just didn't sleep all night. Once again, my parents were fighting, and unfortunately, I actually heard my father strike my mother. The look on her face when I told her I would help was something I will never forget. If we nurture the individual and make that investment, people will be more able to buy into a group goal of excellence. But what about defining what excellence is? Is it simply trying to maintain what's been done before? Is it trying to outdo a standard that has been set by others? Who decides what excellence is for any group of people? It's about having a vision, a goal, an idea where we're going. My 10-year-old son, Sam, is a soccer fanatic. He spends hours watching the plays of Thomas Mueller with the sincere thought that one day he might be able to use those moves against his 10-year-old rivals. He goes down in the basement at 6 o'clock in the morning and practices. And I never tell him he can't do it and he'll never be Thomas Mueller and that's ridiculous. And why not? Because what if he can? And what if his pursuit of that excellence allows him to reach his own level of excellence? I've seen this work time and time again with young musicians. If you ask a group of students to play a piece of music and then ask them to stop, close their eyes, and imagine the best sound they've ever heard on their instrument, professionals playing their instrument, and then play the passage again, without fail, there's always improvement. Our brain has an incredible capacity to envision excellence and then steer our bodies and minds toward it. We just have to have a goal. So achieving excellence is about nurturing the individual and also having a vision and a goal. Both must be present and both must be rigorously pursued. But what about motivation? What is the spark that drives people to achieve excellence in the first place? I've learned in my time as a teacher that it starts from extrinsic and moves towards the intrinsic. I remember a group of students, they were grade six students from another school, came to my school for a clinic session. And I remember them all sitting there, and we were trying to execute a rhythm. It was a series of notes and rests that had to be played perfectly together, with no one playing on the rests. As with most groups, some students played on the rests and interfered with the excellence we could achieve. Now, I really wanted this group of students to achieve excellence in this moment. So I glanced at the clock, saw we had five minutes left, and said in desperation, if you guys can do this for me and play it perfectly, I will buy you a pony. <laughs> they looked at me like I was insane. I said, listen, just don't worry about it. I'm going to follow through. I'll buy you a pony. Just do this. So a magical thing happened. They sat forward. Eyes gleamed, and they all executed the rhythm with perfection. It turns out they always had the tools to achieve excellence. They just had to be motivated to do so. Now, I'm not sure if it was about a achieving a physical object or just not wanting to let the group down, but then again, I'm not sure it matters. That group of students achieved excellence in that moment. And I did buy them the pony, by the way. A year later, another group of students from the same school came by, a fresh crop of grade sixes. And before the clinic started, I heard them all chatting about the band room pony. So I thought, 
man, this thing's become legendary. I'm going to see if I can offer these guys a pony as well. So we came to a moment in the clinic where I wanted them to play two measures and stop. And I said, if everybody stops together and not a single person plays an extra note, I'm going to buy you a pony. And again, it was like magic. They sat forward, eyes gleamed, and they executed the two measures with not a single mistake. Now, I'm pretty sure it was not about that $9 pony that I ended up buying them. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that they just knew they were part of tradition and legacy and did not want to be the ones to let anyone down. If we think about moving towards success with the metaphor of a ladder, we can imagine someone climbing towards success. Having a vision helps them to know where to set up the ladder and motivates them to set it up. Nurturing the individual gives them the strength to climb it one rung at a time. But probably the most important part of the image is giving the ladder something to lean on. And this is where my bricks come in. These bricks fused one on top of the other come together to provide a vision of excellence for those to come. My students have been taught through these bricks that they're valued as individuals and yet as a part of a group, and that the group needs them in order to succeed. And it's my belief that they're going to go out into the world and collect bricks of their own to give to others. And I believe they're going to build something fantastic. Thank you. <laughs>